G'day, I'm Jib Smart, and this short video is to announce DualShock Mapper 1.3, as well as to let you know what to expect on this channel going forward. DualShock Mapper 1.3 is a huge update adding two big new features, Auto Load and Dual Stage Triggers. Auto Load is what I'm most excited about. When a new game or application comes into focus, DualShock Mapper now looks in the Auto Load folder for a config with the same name. If it finds one, it'll load it up automatically. Testing it out, I'm really enjoying moving between different games without having to manually load the appropriate file. This also means I can tweak my settings while I'm playing, and when I return to the game, the changes will automatically be loaded. Auto load is enabled by default, but you can disable it. You might want to disable it if two different games have the same executable name, if you're calculating a game's real world calibration, or if you're experimenting with an unusual configuration, such as when playing with a single Joy-Con. The other big new feature is Dual Stage Triggers. You can now map a soft press and a full press of the DualShock 4's triggers to different inputs. I find Dual Stage Triggers really handy for letting me map Sprint and Crouch to the same trigger in games like Apex Legends and Warframe, which will let you slide along the ground when moving quickly. More details are in the readme. Huge thanks to Nicholas, who saw how DualShock Mapper could benefit from these features and did basically all the work in implementing them. DualShock Mapper is an open source project. Reach out if you'd like to get involved too. Looking forward on the channel, I plan to keep putting out more videos of gyro controls and flick stick in games, whether with a full size controller or a single Joy-Con. Lately I've focused on 3D action games, but any game that benefits from a mouse benefits from gyro controls, so I'd like to show other genres here too. I'm also keen to look at games that already have gyro controls. It's awesome to see it becoming standard on the Switch, though even with the most celebrated titles, it's clear that we as an industry haven't found our legs yet. Apart from this channel, I maintain GyroWiki, which has thorough tutorials on implementing really basic, responsive, good gyro controls. Games continue to come out with gyro controls that underwhelm and fall short of GyroWiki's simple standard. So between the other videos I'm working on, I've got two bigger projects for this channel. First, a breakdown of the good gyro controls found on GyroWiki. How do current games compare? What conventions should we establish that'll make gyro controls better for everyone? And second, a game. It's really basic, just target shooting, and I have nothing to show for it yet, as I've been focused on the programming side. But it has good gyro aiming and flick stick as described on GyroWiki. And it has some more creative controls that are impossible to fake with DualShock Mapper. So stick around, there's lots more to come. Gyro as a mouse and flick stick are game changers, but they're also just the tip of the iceberg. Thanks again to Nicholas for all your work on DualShock Mapper 1.3. And thanks to those who've gotten involved in other ways too. Players and developers who've reached out, joined the Gyro Gaming Discord, shared these videos and articles elsewhere, given me feedback, made videos of your own, or helped me cover the costs involved with GyroWiki and his channel on Patreon. Let's keep going. Let's change how games are played.